Would you please bow with me in prayer? Gracious God, we thank you for this opportunity to meet with one another, to worship and sing your praises, to be encouraged and strengthened. And Lord, now as we open up your word, um, I pray from your word that the words of my mouth and the meditations of our heart might be pleasing and acceptable in your sight, O God. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We have been doing a series of studies through the book of Habakkuk. And uh, before we jump back into that, I uh, just want to remind us all, we probably know this, but God's Word is powerful, and it has, a, it has an impact. And um, uh, as evidence of that, there was an elderly lady. She was uh, leaving her uh, church evening service, and she came home to discover that there was a robber in her house. And uh, she just didn't know what to do about this intruder. She was kind of intimidated, and what do I do, what do I do? And she just yelled out the first thing that came to her mind, and she said, Acts 2.38, stop. And Acts 2.38, let me read it to you. It says, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. Well, surprisingly enough, that intruder, he stopped right dead in his tracks, she then calmly pulled out her uh, cell phone and she called 911, got the authorities to come and as the police officer handcuffed the gentleman and was taking him out and put him in the control car, um, he, he said, now, he said, I don't understand exactly why did you stop when she called out scripture? And he said, what do you mean scripture? I heard her say she had an ax and two thirty eights. Well, we're going to look at Scripture again this morning, and uh, I, I want to uh, I, I want to put out a disclaimer. Okay, at the very beginning of this, I entitled this message "Generosity and Shortage." We're going to look again at just the very end of Habakkuk chapter three, and uh, and the sermon is going to be on giving. Okay, and uh, most preachers know that when you you preach about giving, there's an assumption. There must be a capital funds campaign. There's a big offering coming up, and we're trying to drum up some extra money for the coffers. And that is not the case. The case simply is it's the Word of God. It instructs us on how we're supposed to live. It instructs us on all kinds of aspects of our life. And we are blessed, and it is to our benefit to follow God's leading on what he says about the resources that he gives us, as well as all other aspects of our life. So with that disclaimer, um, I, I want to, um, to read to you Habakkuk chapter 3, verses 17 through 19, and then we'll jump to Deuteronomy chapter 26. It says, Though the fig tree does not bud, and there are no grapes on the vines, Though the olive crop fails and the fields produce no food, though there are no sheep in the pen and no cattle in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in God my Savior. The sovereign Lord is my strength. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer. He enables me to go on the heights. And then from Deuteronomy chapter 26, verses 1 through 11. When you have entered the land the Lord your God is giving you as an inheritance and have taken possession of it and settled in it, take some of the first fruits of all that you produce from the soil of the land the Lord your God is giving you and make them and, and put them in a basket then go to the place the Lord your God will choose as a dwelling for his name and say to the priest in the office at the time, I declare today to the Lord your God that I have come to the land the Lord swore to our forefathers to give us. The priest shall take the basket from your hands and set it down in front of the altar of the Lord your God. Then you shall declare before the Lord your God, my father was a wandering Aramean, and he went down into Egypt 
with a few people and lived there and became a great nation, powerful and numerous. But the Egyptians mistreated us and made us suffer, putting us to hard labor. Then we cried out to the Lord, the God of our fathers, and the Lord heard our voice and saw our misery and toil and oppression. So the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, with great terror and with miraculous signs and wonders. And he brought us to this place and gave us this land, a land flowing with milk and honey. And now I bring the first fruits of the soil that you, O Lord, have given me. Place the basket before the Lord your God and bow down before him. And you and the Levites and the aliens um, among you shall rejoice in all the good things the Lord your God has given to you and your household. Why did I put these two passages together? Um, Well, because uh, it would be easy for us to miss it. But in uh, Habakkuk chapter 3, where uh, Habakkuk begins to name figs, and grapes, and olives, and grain, and sheep, and cattle. He is basically talking about the stock market of his day, okay? He is talking about how people can acquire wealth and, and benefit from all the blessings of God. Uh, before we moved here in Ironton, I had a friend who, he followed the stock market very closely. He was always, every time I saw him, he'd be telling me what was up and what was down in commodities. I never really fully understood what he was talking about, but I knew he knew his stuff. Um, Habakkuk concludes this book by saying, even when we get to the point, and he's foreseeing that the people of Israel are going to be carted off by the Babylonians. He says, even when we get to the point that we don't have any of these means to produce wealth, he says, yet will I praise you, O God. And so what he is referring to and the principle that he's referring to is is the principle of giving to God from the first fruits. And that's why I took us to Deuteronomy chapter 26 because in Deuteronomy Moses is telling the, uh, the people of Israel before they enter into the land, this is how you need to le- live as a people. And one of the examples that he gives is this responsibility for uh, God's people to give first. And there's three things involved. Uh, you're ahead of me a little bit. Three things involved in, um, in giving to the Lord. And the first one is to give sacrificially. He says, from the very first of your produce, you're supposed to gather that together and put it in a basket and come before the priest in the place that God designates where his name is to be glorified, and you're to offer that as an offering before the Lord. What does that mean? What that means is you give to God first before you even know how much you're going to give. Okay? If you, for example, had a vineyard and you... uh, the, the first picking of the grapes, you bring those to God, knowing full well that tomorrow there could be a hailstorm and you could have no crop after this. But you bring first to God and you offer it to God in faith, trusting Him that He's going to bring the harvest for you. He's going to provide for you. So there's a sense of sacrificial giving, but sacrificial in the sense that I'm living by faith. In other words, God wants us to give in such a way that we give first and we trust him for the rest. Okay? In other words, you don't look at everything that you're going to get and then you give God from the leftovers or the surplus, but you give God to first understanding that he's the source of everything for you. And you're living by faith in knowing that he provides for you and meets all of your needs. Um, Now, for the most part, it's just just a simple discipline. It's just a simple discipline of honoring God and giving to him first. 
There are times, and that's what Habakkuk is, is speaking about, there are times in our lives when we can go through hard times and then our faith is really stretched or strengthened or we're encouraged to know that God truly is the provider of all things. Um, and I can only think of two times in my life that that has occurred. Uh, both of them quite a while ago. One was our first year of marriage when Melinda and I got married. It was my last year of seminary. And she and I had already practiced and agreed when we got married that we give to God first. And I was involved in... Uh, an internship working in a Haitian church in Chicago. And, uh, and at that time, I did the bookkeeping. She does it now, but I did it then. And I, uh, there would be times when the bills would come, and I would look at the month, and as a good country and western song says, I knew there was more month than money. I, I, I knew we were going to have a shortfall and it was an act of faith to write that check to the church first. Didn't happen every month, but it happened from time to time. And every single time, without exception, there would be something that would happen that month, and somebody, maybe from my home church, would say, hey, write a little note and say, hey, Dennis, thinking about you, just want to help you in seminary a little bit, and there'd be a little check. It might be just a check like for $15, but that $15 paid that electric bill for that month. And it was God saying, you put me first, I take care of the rest. The other time in my life that that happened was when Justin was born. Because uh, we lived in Ohio, he was born in Kentucky, that meant that Ohio didn't help pick up the bills, neither did Kentucky. We met with the social worker. They said, so we, we fell through the, the net. And uh, we acquired a medical bill that maxed out our insurance. And then they paid 100%. But we had to pay 20% on a $100,000 bill plus our deductible, which exceeded my annual income by quite a lot at that time. And they divided all these bills up, and they wanted a per certain percentage for all these bills. And I knew there wasn't even enough money in the month to pay all the percentages. So I had to meet with the financial officer of the hospital, and I was going to have to show them what I make and get them to consolidate the bills. And I remember very distinctly, I've got to show them, well, how much is our rent? How much is our average utilities? But I also knew we give to the church. And we're going to keep giving to the church. So I put that on the paper first. And I was ready to think, I'm going to have to defend this because they want their money. I didn't have to defend it at all. They didn't even ask me about that. It was fine. And we... We, uh, we eventually paid that boy off because I did jokingly say that, you know, if, uh, if you can't get enough, you're going to have to take him back because we can't afford him. But uh, they, they let us keep him, and uh, God graciously uh, met the deed, and ultimately uh, we, uh, we celebrated his birthday and paying him off. Um, we give to the Lord first, and when you give to him first, uh, he, he takes care of you. He meets your needs. In other words, we should give in such a way uh, you give to the point that it changes how you live. In other words, you're factoring God into your life. Um, it's not just a matter of, uh, yeah, I believe in him and I know him and he's over here. No, he, he, he's a part of every aspect of my life. And that includes uh, how I budget and how I work out what I'm going to do. And when we give sacrificially, man, it, it has an impact. It has an impact on a lot of people. Um, next week, uh, seven of us are going to share about our trip to Costa Rica. And uh, 
how God's presence was in all of that, I want to share about a gentleman that we met in Costa Rica, Jose. The pastor uh, introduced us the first day we showed up. Uh, he said, this is Jose, and he, he is going to be the foreman for the work that you're going to do. Uh, Jose had recently been injured, and he had to have surgery on his leg. And so the pastor said, he's not really going to be working. He's just going to supervise the work. Um, which wasn't really true because, man, he was, he was thrown in those concrete bags into the mixer and the five-gallon uh, five buckets of rocks and sand into the mixer. He, he was right in the thick of things and working, but he didn't walk very far because he had a little bit of a limp. Uh, there were two things that were very noticeable about Jose, though. One was this big smile on his face and how he greeted us and how happy he was to be working. And the pastor told us he just, he really shouldn't be working, but he has a heart for the work and a heart for the church. The other obvious thing about Jose was he was wearing flip-flops. He's in a construction site, and he's wearing flip-flops. And we started asking around, and those were his only shoes. And so that evening, that first evening, uh, I know the ladies were really disappointed about this, but we made a trip to Walmart. That's a joke. They, were deli they, they couldn't wait to go see the Walmart there. But we went to Walmart, and we got him a pair of shoes. And, and it, it was such a blessing to be able to present him shoes that next morning so that he had something to keep his feet safe on the construction site. And, you know, you kind of, when you do that, you kind of, in, in a sense, and I, I, you've all helped people out. You, you know, uh, you tap yourself on the back, and you, you feel good that you gave. But I had no clue. On Thursday, um, I met with the pastor and some people from the Baptist Federation because we wanted to give some more money to help them finish their work off. And the pastor said, well, I want Jose to be in this meeting too uh, because he's been, he, he knows what it's going to take to finish this work. And it wasn't until Thursday that I found out from the pastor that Jose was not only out of work and working with us at the church, but he had refused to receive any money from the church. He was donating all of his time in service to the church and the man didn't have a pair of shoes so that little gift of shoes <laughs> was nothing in comparison to the sacrifice that he was making and I'm telling you there was a sense of joy in that man's service to the Lord so God's principle is we give sacrificially secondly um, in giving of the first fruits you give joyfully as well. Habakkuk clearly says, even when I don't have any of those things, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in the God of my salvation, the God my Savior. In other words, this, there's this acknowledgement that when we give we give back because everything that you and I have is a gift from God. It, 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 it's, a, it's a recognition that, you know, I'm just giving back a small portion of all that you have blessed me with and how good you have been to me. In Matthew chapter 6, verses 19 through 21, these are the words of Jesus. Jesus says, do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moth and rust uh, do not destroy and thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Do you know, do you, have, have you ever thought about when you're, when you're purchasing something, if it's something you, that you love, it's like really fun to go purchase that. And there are other things that you, have to, you just have to have for life sometimes. And you go, man, that costs a lot. 
and you just kind of, you buy it, but you buy it grudgingly. You buy it because it's a necessity, but you don't really have fun in buying it. Um, what's, what's the difference? The difference is your heart, right? If it's something that you really love, it, uh, it, it doesn't cost that much. Now, I could probably start World War III right here in the church if I talked about tickets to the Cardinals game as opposed to the Cubs game. But, y- y- you know, but if it's something you love, right, it just doesn't cost that much in a sense. That's what Jesus is saying. He's saying where your heart is, there your treasure will be also. You, it, your heart is involved. Your heart is engaged. In other words, if you love me, it shouldn't be a chore. It, it, it should be an expression of, of, of joy uh, to be able to give back to the Lord. Um, and the opposite is also true, really. An unwillingness to give is an indication of a heart problem. If, if, if I'm reluctant to give back to the Lord who has given me everything, then there's a problem in that relationship. And I'm not just talking about money, people. I'm talking about giving your time and your service. It, 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 he's given us everything. And so we rightfully should give back to him. And it shouldn't be out of a sense of drudgery at all. In 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7, uh, Paul writes, Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. So it's not about, okay, pastor, you beat me up enough. I'll put a little bit more money in the offering plate. It's not about that at all. It's about a sense of, wow, God, you are so very good. And I just want to show you how much I love you back. Uh, Friday night, we got to talk to Emily, our daughter, again. And uh, I love the technology that we can see her and talk to her. And she was filling us in on this past week and filling us in on her students and an opportunity that she got to uh, have. Uh, she got to go to a cultural center in, uh, in Mexico City. And at that cultural center, they were doing traditional Mexican dance and they had mariachi bands and it was it was just a, a, a really neat experience and she said right before the event was starting she went to uh, the uh, concession stand to get uh, a bottle of water and she got behind uh, an American who couldn't speak Spanish and and the the, the Mexican who was waiting on him couldn't speak English uh, but he he wanted two bottles of water for his himself and his wife and he handed the the guy a $20 bill and, and what was trying to be communicated is, I do not have change for a $20 bill. I do not have enough pesos to give you a change back. And Emily knew all of this, and she's hearing all this, and she just s- simply said to the man in front of her, she said, uh, let me take care of this. And she started talking, and she, she paid for their waters as well as hers. And then she turned to the American, and she said, it's all taken care of. Just go enjoy the show. And he said, now, wait a minute. He said, I haven't paid anything. I, I have to owe you money. I, I mean, I need to pay you something. And she said, no, I came, when I came down here, I didn't know a lot of Spanish. And she said, and there were a lot of people that would step in and help me out. And she said, and I'm just passing it on. And as my daughter typically does, when she said, and I'm passing it on, she got this huge grin on her face. And I could tell she just was filled with joy that she could help somebody out. There is joy in giving. There is joy in being able to serve. So we are called to give sacrificially. We're called to give joyfully. And we're called to give, finally, graciously. 
it's out of a sense of God's grace that he has poured out on us that we give in return. Habakkuk gives praise to the God of his salvation. And Moses tells the people, um, now when you come and you bring this basket and you offer it to God, he says, this is what you need to say. And it's like it's rehearsed. He says, you need to say that I come from someone who was a wanderer who settled in Egypt. And then we became a great people, but we were oppressed by the Egyptians. And we cried out to God, and God heard our cry, and God delivered us, and he brought us to this land. What is Moses telling them to say? He's, he's telling them, rehearse the message of salvation. Retell the story every time you bring your offering. Remember in your heart and your mind what God saved you from. Now, you and I have a whole lot more reason to praise God than even the Israelites back then. Because we know through Jesus Christ and the sacrifice he made on the cross that we have been delivered from hell itself. We have been delivered from the bondage of sin. We are no longer slaves. We are set free to live for God and know him personally. And you and I can give graciously because we have the perfect example. We give back a little, right? Jesus gave everything. He did not withhold one thing for you and me, did he? Even his life was not too precious to pay for your life and mine. He gave it all. And likewise, then you and I can gr be gracious in giving because of the grace of Jesus in our lives. Close with this. There are two people in this church that whenever I ask them, how are you, their response is consistently always the same. One person, when I ask her, how are you, she always says, I am blessed. I am blessed. Now, that doesn't mean that every day is the same for her. I know that even after she says, I am blessed, there are days in which she shares with me, and she's going through some hard times, and sometimes everything's going very well. But her response is always the same, I am blessed. It's a reminder that the Lord is in her life, and he's ever working. And the other person, when I ask him, how are you, he always says to me, better than I deserve. Better than I deserve to which I always think, and me too, because I know what I deserve. I deserve to be separated from God because of my own sin, but I'm far better than that. Even in those expressions, there's a sense of giving back to God and thanking him. As we close the service, this is my challenge to all of you today, and I want to ask you to, uh, in your own hearts, pray and ask the Lord is there something or some way in which you're calling me to give of myself maybe in an act of service maybe in a way in which I can minister to somebody else in need maybe in the resources that you have given me Maybe in a talent that I have that I need to share for your glory. Ask him today, is there some way in which you can give back? Let's pray. 
Lord God, we bow before you this morning, and we thank you, God, that you are a giving God. We've looked at your word, and we've seen the example from Habakkuk and from the instructions that you gave to Moses to deliver to your people, Israel, on giving of the first fruits, of giving back to you from all the abundance that you have poured out upon all of our lives and yet, God, we see and are reminded again the truth that what you ask of us, you already model. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Because you love us, God, you give and you gave us the very best, the most significant gift that could ever be offered, your Son, Jesus Christ. That is a far greater gift than I could ever offer. That my heart would even allow me to offer. And yet, God, the depths of your love for us motivated you to send your Son who willingly came and gave his life for us. And because of that love and that grace that you have so freely bestowed upon us, Lord, fill our hearts with thanksgiving, with gratitude. Make us gracious people who, like our God, give not out of compulsion, but out of sheer joy and delight. And thank you, Lord, for the truth of the matter is everything that we give ultimately has already been a gift given to us by you. And Lord, may you have our hearts fully. May we love the giver far more than any of the gifts. And Lord, I pray for each one of us this day that you're speaking to us about what it is we can do, what it is we can give, what talent, what service, what ministry, how we can make a difference for you through your spirit to advance your kingdom to minister to others, to show the love of Jesus. And Lord, if there were a basket, that at least in our minds we can put those things in a basket and we lay them at your feet and we say, God, we give this back because you are worthy and we love you. And we want to serve you. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Our hymn of invitation is, I give my life for thee. And it's really, a, it's really a hymn that's written from Jesus' perspective. He's describing all that he's given for us and what will we give in return. And as we uh, stand and sing this hymn, I want to invite you. Maybe uh, the first step for any one of you is to say, I give my life to you, Lord. I, I, I offer myself uh, because you gave your life for me. Maybe God's prompting you to give by stepping out and saying, I need to be a part of this church. I need to join this church family. Feel free to respond as God is leading as we stand and sing, I give my life for thee.